Hey, so did you know you're actually watching me right now on a webcam? Well, you probably did because you clicked on this video because of the topic. Anyway, I usually use my Sony a6400 mirrorless camera for face shots in my videos. But yes, this is in fact not a camera. It is the Elgato Facecam Pro webcam. So just how good is this for people wanting to make their content look good without splashing out on a high-end camera? Well, let's take a look at it. Now, I've used a lot of webcams over the years, including the Logitech C920, the Logitech Brio, and even the original Elgato Facecam. But this Facecam Pro promises to blow all of those out of the water in terms of quality, so today we're going to find out. Although, I probably used the Facecam shot for the intro, so you likely already know. First things first, let's get the price tag out of the way. This does not come cheap, carrying a $300 price tag in the US and £300 price tag in the UK. So yes, you are definitely paying a lot of money here for a webcam. But if you compare that to the cost of the next step up, which would be entry-level mirrorless cameras, then you'd be looking around 600 to 800 even before the cost of lenses and capture cards. Before we test out the quality and value for money though, let's take a look at what you actually get in the box. I don't know what it is, but I always really enjoy unboxing Elgato products. As you can see, we have the camera at the top, then below is the quick start guide, safety information that nobody reads, then we also have a 6 foot USB-C to USB-C cable, and then finally a mount for the webcam to attach to. Taking a look at the camera in more detail, and the first thing you'll notice is the size. It's very big and bulky, and there's a reason for that which we'll get onto shortly. In terms of aesthetics, it's simple and sleek, which fits a lot of Elgato's products, and I'm definitely here for it. The USB cable has USB-C connectors on both ends and is 180 centimeters or 6 feet long, so plan accordingly if using this in your setup, as for me, it wasn't quite long enough to reach where I mount my cameras. Finally, the included mount is there for people who want to have this camera sat on top of their monitor or a laptop screen, and it features a standard quarter inch thread which screws into the bottom of the Facecam Pro. Now onto the specs, and I mentioned before that there's a reason this camera is so bulky. It features a large lens with a 21mm full frame equivalent focal length, and a wide f2.0 aperture to allow more light into the sensor for better quality images and excellent low light sensitivity. And speaking of the sensor, this is where the Facecam Pro excels. It actually contains a 1 and 1 8 inch Sony sensor that you would normally find in a camera. This allows for ultra high definition images with great low light performance and sharper video all the way up to 4K at 60fps. The Facecam Pro also has flash memory built in which allows you to save your settings and they won't just reset every time you use the webcam. It has an image processor which has a ridiculously long list of features including manual and automatic exposure, autofocus, real-time encoding, colour correction, white balance, gain and shutter control and so much more. And then on the back it also has a large heatsink to dissipate heat and keep the webcam from overheating during prolonged use. But that's enough about specs, let's see how this camera actually looks. So right now you're watching me on the Facecam Pro straight out of the box with all default settings and to be honest I'm immediately impressed with the quality. I usually use a thousand pounds mirrorless camera and lens combination for my videos and honestly this isn't hugely far off in terms of quality from what I was expecting. I'll do some comparisons shortly but let me know down in the comments what you think about the quality of this webcam so far. The only small downside I've noticed so far is that the autofocus did seem to keep adjusting a little bit too much for my liking, so I ended up turning it off, but I don't really move around enough for it to matter anyway. But other than that, for a webcam, I think this looks very, very good. And just to compare, now you're watching me on my Sony a6400 setup that I would usually use in my videos. And obviously there's some more clarity in the image and you're getting a lot more background blur than you would with the Facecam Pro, which is to be expected. But this camera and lens setup does cost around £1,000, which is more than three times the cost of the Elgato Facecam Pro. But the question is, is it more than three times the quality? Now this that you're watching me on now is the original Elgato Facecam, which comes in at £130. As you can see, the image isn't awful, but it doesn't quite live up to what you get on the Facecam Pro. And this one only supports 1080p 60 rather than the 4K 60 that you get on the Pro. I'll let you guys judge for yourself in the comparisons and let me know what you think down below. One of the biggest advantages this webcam has is the amount of control that you can have over the settings. If you download the Elgato Camera Hub, it gives you so many settings and options to play around with to get the kind of image that you want. 
You can choose the level of zoom that works best for you from the wide angle shot that I've been using in this video all the way to this super zoomed in shot. You can also toggle autofocus on or turn it off and customize it yourself or choose from the built-in presets. There are sliders to adjust the contrast and saturation to get the kind of color that you want, which can also be paired with the white balance settings as well to precisely set the kind of image that you prefer. And if your room is too dark or bright, you can either use the automatic exposure settings or you can control the shutter speed and ISO yourself for more accurate light control. Definitely one of the most comprehensive array of settings I've seen in a webcam. To sum up then, this certainly pushes the boundaries of what a webcam is capable of. If you're not yet in a position to splash out on a mirrorless camera or DSLR for your streams or videos, then this is a great cheaper option. At £300 or $300, it's definitely pricey for a webcam, but when it begins to bridge the gap between a webcam and an actual camera, I would certainly say it's worth splashing that bit of extra cash. The lens and sensor combo on here give you so many more customization options than most webcams to tailor the image to your environment. And the quality of the image is definitely one of the best that I've seen in a webcam and of course you guys can judge it for yourself from this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you found this video helpful and if you did please feel free to leave a thumbs up as it really helps with the algorithm. And let me know what you think about the webcam or the video in general down in the comments. What camera are you using for your content? Would you pick one of these up? Let me know. As always, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit that sub button. We are creeping up on 50,000 subscribers, which is absolutely crazy. So thank you very much for all the support. Have a wonderful week and I will see you guys in the next video. See you later.